Last year, I stated that the Fujifilm 18mm f1.4 is the best lens that Fujifilm makes. Well, I was wrong. After a year of use, I can confidently say that the best Fujifilm lens that they make is the... Before we get started, I need to put it out there. This is not going to be a technical review. There are going to be no pixel peeping, no bokeh comparisons, or brick wall distortion tests. I'm going to be sharing my personal experience after using this lens for wedding photography, portraits, documenting my family, content creation, and even street photography, and sharing a ton of example images along the way. And while I used to be an official Fujifilm ambassador, as of February 2023, I am no longer affiliated with Fujifilm at all. So this review is not sponsored by Fujifilm and I bought the lens with my own money and I'm able to say whatever I want about the lens, good or bad. When this lens was first announced, I really had no intention of buying it or owning it. I already own the 35mm 1.4s and despite how much people praise this lens for its character, it actually was my least used lens in my kit. I only reached for it for one specific reason, for detailed shots of clothing, jewelry, because of the 35mm 1.4s very close focus and magnification. So when reviewing the spec sheet of the 33mm f1.4 and seeing that its magnification was slightly worse on a focal length that I barely use, I was I was like, no, I don't need this lens. But then I had the opportunity to try it out and test out the lens for a couple weeks. And I figured, hey, this could make for some good content proving why I really didn't need this lens. And boy, I was wrong. The sharpness, the colors, the micro contrast, the image quality of this lens is phenomenal. On my previous gen cameras like the X-T3 or the X-S10, it breathes new life into the cameras by resolving details that I didn't really think were possible on those sensors. And this lens is indeed future proof as it gets even even better when paired with the X-T5. And before you 35mm f1.4 fans come in and say, oh, the 33mm f1.4 rendering is too clinical, it's too sterile. It's not. It still has a great 3D look for the out of focus elements. And I also shoot with a 10% moment Cinebloom filter to take off that digital look with a little bit of diffusion. You can always make a sharp lens a little bit softer, but you can't put more sharpness and micro contrast into a soft lens. And for those who don't believe me, if the YouTube compression is making it too hard to judge these example images, then please head over to my website to check out the companion blog post for this video made possible because of today's video sponsor, Squarespace. As a content creator, Squarespace is a great tool for creating companion content for my YouTube videos. With Squarespace blogs, I'm able to post high resolution images taken with the gear that I'm reviewing to provide you all with image samples that don't suffer from YouTube's compression. And overall, it just helps you all make a better, more informed purchasing decision. I've actually been using Squarespace for over 10 years. Their templates are super easy to use and it makes it incredibly simple to create and maintain a professional looking website. My Squarespace website was an essential part of how I built my my photography business. It allows me to showcase my portfolio, share recent work on my blog, and I can also receive inquiries from potential clients through my contact form. And in today's digital age, it is vital to have a website that you can completely control free from constraints of any type of like social media algorithm. So if you're one of those photographers relying on your Instagram profile as the sole place to share your work and build your photography business, I would really consider making a website on Squarespace. You can visit squarespace.com slash to start a free trial and then get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So it's no secret that lenses with a 28 millimeter equivalent field of view are my absolute favorite. So of course, the 18 millimeter f1.4 was for the most part my undisputed favorite lens in the Fujifilm X-mount lineup. But with this 33 millimeter lens, even though the 50 millimeter field of view wasn't interesting to me, for some reason on this lens, I cannot stop using it. I want to use this lens to take photos. I want to use this lens to take videos. I really reach for it a lot more than I thought 
thought I would. And I think it's because after being drawn to the wide angle lenses for so long, this lens's slight compression, the smooth bokeh in combination with the pop and the subject isolation from the micro contrast is really a refreshing look and exciting to photograph with. So when you document with a wide angle lens, it really just immerses you into the scene because of the rawness of kind of the rendering and the distortion. But with this 33 millimeter lens, it takes those same moments and as cheesy as it sounds, it really makes them memories. It gives a slight separation so you can really hone in on the expressions, the, the little details, the joy, and it doesn't completely obliterate the background and remove context like a more traditional telephoto lens like the 50 millimeter f1.0. It's this subtle middle ground that I have grown to really appreciate as specifically a father documenting my growing family. And if you're not buying this, you know, specific rendering thing that I'm claiming, from a practical perspective, if you're like me and you have young children, using a true telephoto lens like the 56 millimeter 1.2 means that you're significantly further away from the subject that you're photographing. So if you're photographing a little kid, they may have a risk of getting into something they're not supposed to or tripping and falling and you can't reach them. Whereas the 33 millimeter focal length is really, I think, the best kind of focal range for documenting toddlers. So any parent photographers out there or, you know, uncle or auntie photographers, this is a really good lens to invest in. Oh my God. A photographer's kit is really a reflection of their creative goals and their technical needs. For this season of my life, it really has been all about documenting my kids. Toddlers running toward and away from the camera is probably, I think, the most strenuous autofocus test that you can throw at a camera and lens combination. The autofocus on this lens is leaps and bounds better than the 35mm f1.4 and probably the best that I've used across the Fujifilm lineup. The best thing about this lens is that it's also near silent. I have a specific need for quiet autofocus because of recording video and just making home movies of my family. <laughs> to truly capture the essence of the world around us, especially our loved ones, you want to be able to capture the entire sensory gamut, how they talk, their laugh, <laughs> how they move. And the 33mm f1.4 is so, so good at tracking, especially on the X-T5 and the X-H2S. <laughs> This is my favorite lens for hybrid photo video coverage. So this lens can't all be perfect, right? The only thing that I had to nitpick is that it would have been nice if they included the metal lens hood. This metal lens hood that I've been showing is actually something that's sold separately, whereas the metal lens hood with the 35 mm f1.4 was included in the box. And this specific lens hood, if you can't find it online, it's actually listed as the lens hood that's compatible with the 23 mm 1.4 version 2, but it also fits the little lens bayonet slot for the 33 mm f1.4. Other than that, this lens is 
absolutely perfect. And if your budget allows for it, I believe that every Fujifilm photographer and videographer needs to own this lens. You will not regret it. And even if you don't think you need it or you don't want this lens because of the focal length, because of your beloved 35 millimeter F1.4, this lens is so good that I guarantee it's going to change your mind.